thank you so thank you very much dear devotees for joining uh, this weekend uh, from uh, now 9 am to 11 am and tomorrow also sunday 9 am to 11 am eastern standard time we are very fortunate we are going to have a virtual yatra of shri barsana dham which is the very own place of shrimati radharani and uh, we are very fortunate to have uh, his grace vishwaru prabhu to take us on this parikrama of shri barsana dham today and tomorrow and next weekend next saturday and sunday also 9 am to 11 am eastern standard time his grace vishwaru prabhu will be taking us for the yatra of shri nandaga dham uh, today it is shri barsana dham and vishwaru prabhu took us on a very wonderful virtual gordhan parikrama few weekends ago so we all know vishwaru prabhu he is a very senior uh, iskon devotee from uh, mumbai india and he is a uh, twice initiated brahman initiated disciple of uh, shri radhana swami maharaj and uh, he is uh, a doctor by profession he did his mbbs from grant medical college jj group of hospitals mumbai followed by a fellowship in palliative care and hospice from san diego a uh, hospice center in san diego california and he also has a post graduate diploma in psychological counseling he is the trustee of shri chaitanya seva trust which runs 13 hospitals and currently he is the deputy director of the bhakti vedanta group of hospitals and research institute and vishwaru prabhu is the head of the department of the spiritual care training and education department of uh, bhakti vedanta hospital and this shri chaitanya seva trust runs three hospitals in mira road two hospitals in mathura uttar pradesh and eight hospitals in the villages in thane district and uh, vishwaru prabhu was a pioneer in creating the syllabus of spiritual care in nursing education and therefore he is a chief faculty of the bhakti vedanta institute of nursing education in the subject of spiritual care in nursing vishwaru prabhu is also a pioneer of the bhakti vedanta hospitals i services in barsana barsana dham uh, mathura so vishwaru prabhu has served barsana dham he has served varajwasis for the last 27 years and they do around 4000 or more uh, surgeries free of cost in barsana every year and he is a senior counselor of the shishi radha gopinath bhakta samaj since 1989 and he is also a spiritual counselor to the doctors the consulting doctors and senior nurses at, at bhakti vedanta the hospital and uh, vishwaru prabhu has spoken on the topic of end of life spiritual care at bhakti vedanta the hospice and also he has conducted courses in clinical chaplaincy in the uk and at bhakti vedanta the hospital and vishwaru prabhu also was a regular speaker on the atma serial that came on uh, television for for many years so vishwaru prabhu is very very qualified to take us on this parikrama because vishwaru prabhu you know he is a very exemplary devotee and he has served the dham he has served the varajwasis for years and years selflessly this is the greatest qualification my dear friends so let us open our hearts let us open our ears and with a heart filled with gratitude let us go with vishwaru prabhu let us hold his hand and go with vishwaru prabhu on this very wonderful two day parikrama of the most beautiful shri barsana dham vishwaru prabhu i humbly request you to please take us on this uh, yatra to shri barsana dham his grace vishwaru prabhu ki jai jagat guru shri prabhu pad ki jai thank you vishwaru prabhu please go ahead jai jai shri radhe shyam नमः ओम विष्णु पदाय कृष्ण पृष्ठाय भूतले श्रीमते राधानाथ स्वामी नमः ओम विष्णु पदाय कृष्ण पृष्ठाय भूतले श्रीमते भक्ति वेदांत स्वामी नमः नमस्ते सारस्वते देवे गौरवाणी प्रचारिणे निर्विशेष शून्यवादी पाश्चात्य देशधारिणे श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्रीअद्वैत गदाधर श्रीवासदि गौर भक्त वृंद ओं अज्ञानतिरांद से ज्ञानाजन शलाकया चक्षुर्मील तस्म श्री गुरव नम श्री चैतन्य मनोविष्ट स्थापित येन भूतले स्वयं कदा मह्यम 
ददाति स्वपदाकम श्रीकृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्रीअद्वैत गदाधर श्रीवासदी गौरभक्तवृंद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे तप्त कांचन गौरांगी राधे वृंदावनेश्वरी वृषभानु सुते देवी प्रणमा हरि प्रिय हे कृष्ण करुणा सिंधु दीनबंधु जगतपते गोपेश गोपिका कांत राधा कांत नमोस्तुते हरे कृष्ण थैंक यू डियर डिबोटीज फॉर जॉइनिंग अस इन द मॉर्निंग इन एटलांटा इस्कॉन एंड इन द इवनिंग इन इंडियन कॉन्टिनेंट um before we even think of going to varsana we need to prepare our consciousness because we know for very sure that by buying ticket or by booking room or by traveling booking traveling uh, vehicles inside vrindavan varsana or by logging in on a zoom link one cannot reach barsana one can reach barsana only if our consciousness is ready if our consciousness is not ready then barsana will remain remain in oblivion and we will only hear stories to entertain ourselves so what is the qualification to enter barsana let us see how does krishna enter in barsana what is his mood let us follow at least krishna the way he enters so first of all krishna gives up all his position opulence power influence whatever he has naturally as supreme personality of godhead he gives that up what to speak of barsana even before entering vrindavan he gives that up this is the most important thing to understand the supreme personality of godhead who controls everything even the blade of grass does not move without his desire that supreme personality of godhead who has created spiritual world who has created material world who has created every single thing that you see and that you don't see how much power he has and from our point of view how much pride he should have because he controls everything he owns everything enjoys everything bhokta ram yagya tapasam sarva loka maheshwaram he is the boss but how does he come to vrindavan first of all he gives up his position of supreme personality of god it that too he doesn't even want anybody to know that he is supreme personality of god it so he uses one of his maya called jagan mohini maya in 10th canto it is explained what is jagan mohini maya jagan mohini maya steals the knowledge of people that krishna is supreme lord once that knowledge is stolen because they all are realized souls those who take birth in vrindavan barsana nandagaon they all are highly perfectly realized soul they know everything perfectly so that that part of their realization and knowledge that sri krishna is supreme lord that part is stolen by krishna and then they become bereft of that knowledge then they will not see krishna as supreme lord they will see oh my dear friend oh my dear child let me breast feed him let me protect him oh he is eating dirt let me save him let me train him let me scold him let me punish him let me tie him up all this kind of wonderful emotions come up only when they forget that supreme lord is lord so first thing if krishna is giving up his position of supreme personality of god it what are we supposed to give a give up we are supposed to give up our false pride that we are something we are nothing actually we are insignificant we are people having insignificant existence so krishna is giving up his true position we have to give up the pride of false position i am a man i am a doctor i may be director i may be trustee or whatever you all are first forget that second 
what mood krishna adopts krishna adopts sakhi bhava which is a very high conception but at our level how to understand sakhi bhava is servitude to become servant of the servant of the servant that means you know, when we are in dham we don't claim that we should go first in prasadam queue we don't claim the first seat in the bus we don't claim the claim the best room we don't claim the best facilities we just push everybody ahead let them have the best thing let me serve let me assist them let me become their dasanu dasanu das so shri krishna goes there as radharani is servant of servant of servant and how does he enter prasana third thing after adopting this mood of being a servant of radharani servants just to please her how does he enter he rolls in the dust of prasana so we also whenever we enter we chant her name and we roll in the dust that's how we enter if supreme personality of godhead the controller of everything if he enters like that he owns that land also <laughs> but he knows that he has come there to achieve something which nobody has achieved and what is that that is the mercy of radharani because in vrindavan dham in nandgaon barsana javat and all 108 forests that are there in vrindavan dham no one says jai shri krishna that is jai shri krishna is in nathadwara in jati in um, other holy places jai shri krishna in varsana vrindavan dham only jai shri radhe 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 or only radhe but that is the way of calling krishna also when you call krishna as krishna in vrindavan dham or anywhere you may not listen you may not even show that he has heard also but if you say radhe then immediately he turns and sees who is calling my beloved and that's how his attraction is attraction uh, his attention is attracted so let us understand what is this varsana shrimati radharani stays there as a queen she controls krishna she is controlling every movement every emotion of krishna krishna loves to be her servant loves to please her loves to do whatever she likes even if it is rolling on the dust doesn't mind he simply wants to do anything and everything that will please her and fourth thing for us not for krishna give up our attachment to mode of passion and ignorance these are the various kinds of you no know, problems that we have when we live in cities like uh, mumbai or america or atlanta or new york or chicago or bangalore or mumbai whatever we have that you know typical nature even gandharvas had come to one time uh, brindavan dham and they had come with that gandharva consciousness so they could not appreciate krishna eating the remnants of his friends they were discussing among themselves what is this supreme lord we can't believe that he is supreme lord he is eating the remnants from the coward boys not even brahmins and they discuss that with brahma and do you know something you will be very amazed to know brahma's illusion began from that time when he associated with the gandharvas who went to see krishna by some great fortune of past lives whatever lives they had fortune of entering vrindavan when krishna was performing his braj leela in the most purest possible way and then he was eating the food remnants from the coward boys and the gandharvas couldn't take it they were bewildered so what is the problem with gandharvas that they had carried their gandharva loka consciousness with them with that consciousness one cannot appreciate vrindavan dham or barsana dham it's like in the olden days you know uh, we used to hear comment cricket commentary from australia from england and we had to change two bands on the radio and fine tune the station and that time you would hear if you are not tuned properly 
then you do here only like this. No clear, no clarity. And we fight tune. Then yes, I'm Tony Coe's here, and now Sunil Gavaskar is going to bat. Something like that will start coming in Australian language, Australian accent. So what do you require? What do you require? You require tuning to that place. When you get tuned to that place, then only you can hear or understand what's going on there. So Gandharvas were not tuned. They were tuned to Gandharva Loka, and with that tuning, they came. So they could not understand what was happening there in front of their eyes, which was the most, most highest benediction that we can ever receive to see Krishna eating the food remnants of his friends that he never does in Vaikuntha. Huh? So beware. Do not carry your city consciousness with you, even though you are on Zoom. Give up that Rajoguna and Tamoguna. Situate yourself on Shuddha Sattva Guna at least for two, three hours. Prepare. It's like we prepare our bag. You know, we, we put warm clothes and we put mufflers and we could, we could um, toothbrushes and shaving cream and we put the Odomos cream for mosquito repellents. All this is preparation. What is the preparation mood? What weather is there in the dham? Accordingly, we take our clothes. We go in May, we don't carry warm clothes. We go in December, we call it carry warm clothes. That means we even externally tune ourselves with the atmosphere in Braj Bhumi. And accordingly, we carry gloves or socks or caps or you know covering ears, all those things. But what about the soul? What about the Atma? What about the mind? Doesn't it require some luggage to be carried to Vrindavan Dham? Do you think without carrying some luggage on the mental and spiritual level, you will be able to appreciate what is happening there? No. That's what tuning means. You have to get tuned to the mood. See how Uddhava went. Huh? Uddhava went with his mind that I am Brahaspati's disciple. I am a very learned, highly learned from the highest teacher in the whole universe. I am most close to Krishna. I am his friend. I am his minister. I am his cousin brother. I look like him. I am all powerful. I sit with him. I eat with him. I drink with him. I do everything with him. So I am something. And with that he went there and he got completely defeated. That too by the mercy of the Lord. If Krishna wouldn't have defeated him, he wouldn't have got the real nectar of Vrindavan Barsana Dham. When his consciousness which he brought from outside was completely smashed, then only he became eligible to appreciate, to perceive the consciousness of Vrindavan Barsana Nandagav Dham. And he could dive into that, the depth of that mood. He just didn't go physically there. He just didn't go with warm clothes in, in winter season. He adopted himself at the level of consciousness with the consciousness of gopis, with the consciousness of Nanda Maharaj, Yashoda, coward boys, the land, the dust of Vrindavan. Okay, okay, let us do one thing. I will tell you uh, some acid test for all of you. If at the end of two days, at the end of tomorrow, that is your 9, 9 a.m., hours 8.30 p.m. Sunday evening, or yours 9 a.m. Sunday morning, if you feel like becoming a blade of grass in Barsana, then we would feel that you have, you have entered Barsana and your Yatra is successful. If you feel, I want to roll in the dust where gopis have traversed, I want to roll in that dust eternally. Then ask yourself, I'm not going to ask you, ask you. Ask yourself, I'll remind you tomorrow evening. And then you think whether you really think like that or not. That way you will know whether you have entered Barsana or you just heard the stories to entertain yourself. Whatever we are going to discuss is not meant for entertainment. It is meant for spiritual purification. It is not meant for enjoyment. It is not meant for relaxation. It's an intense activity of spiritual purification and spiritual upliftment that is at the lotus feet of Radharani and Krishna. So with these few words, I will like to go on to the pictorial virtual 
यात्रा टू बरसाना धाम आर यू एबल टू सी वॉट यू आर सींग लेक्चर विल गो इन एक्सप्लेनिंग टू यू दिस्ट्री दैट विल क्रिएट द मूड that you that you need to have huh? so that's why let us uh, get to know this understanding of the history the first history i wrote down as three satis satis means chaste ladies satis means chaste ladies and there were three mahasatis in the goloka vrindavan and they had gone to visit uh, lord at that time they forgot to bow down to the kumaras four kumaras who were at the at the uh, gate of vaikuntha so immediately the four kumaras cursed them that you will have to go to the material world and you have to take birth so they were i very upset you know it always strikes me please think three mahasatis did not even like the thought of going to the material world and all of us are living very comfortably in the material world they were so upset even with the thought of going to the material world immediately lord vishnu came out and said no no don't worry it is not a curse it is actually a blessing on you because there are three mahasatis you will give give you will be giving birth to them that's why i need you to go down through you three mahasatis will take take birth in the material world in the course of time one of the mahasatis gave birth as wife of lord shiva to parvati to to uh, sorry one of the uh, mother Gave birth to Parvati, who is Menaka, <clears throat> and the second one gave birth to Sita Devi, and third one gave birth to Kalavati. Kalavati actually, technically also came from the Yagya Kunda of King Balanandana, from Kanne Kubja, that is Kannauj in UP. In Kannauj in UP, which is called as Kanne Kubja. king baladandana performed a yagya from there kalavati came and king baladandana's wife was kalavati's mother so this kalavati later on got married with uh, suchandra king suchandra and king suchandra and kalavati they performed 12000 years of tapasya very very hard tapasya eating only dried leaves falling from the trees for so many years some people say it is uh, 12 celestial years some people say it is 12000 earthly years but for us it's a long period that much we should know and then in next lifetime uh, in that lifetime when they perform tapasya lord brahma became pleased and appeared to them and lord brahma said yes i want to give you benediction please ask so suchandra immediately asked for moksha and brahma said tathastu now this was a big problem immediately kalavati became very upset she said oh lord brahma how dare you give moksha when i am alive what will happen to me what will happen to my time i'll be in so much separation in pain i will curse you now you can imagine brahma got scared lord brahma got scared by the threat of the mahasati you can imagine the power of chastity if some of us all of us even men has to be chaste don't think only women are supposed to be chaste we are supposed to be also chaste to our wife and to the lord and women are supposed to be chaste to their husband and to the lord so chastity is applicable to both men and women and this chastity is so powerful that even supreme lord also is scared scared of those people who are chaste so then brahma got very scared he said i'm very sorry i'm sorry what you do is okay okay what you do is you just uh, both of you stay in my loka in my uh, my uh, brahma loka till vaivasvata manu enters in his 28th dwapar yuga that time shri krishna will take birth and also shri krishna's internal potency will take birth that is radharani and you will give birth you will become the mother of radharani and in that lifetime you will serve radharani as parents 
at the end of that life both of you will go back to godhead so that's how brahma somehow saved himself from getting cursed so this is the story of uh, the three satis how finally kalavati took birth as kirtida as the daughter of indusen and mukhara devi this 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 couple re, uh, stayed near radhakund in one village and there mukhara devi gave birth to kirtida and this kirtida was married to brishabhanu maharaj and settled down in barsana and then later on became mother of radharani this is one history second history is of uh, so sorry, sorry to interrupt sorry prabhu ishwar prabhu so suchandra became uh, brishabhanu maharaj yes okay hare krishna so, brishabhanu maharaj kalavati became kirtida and they got married now second story is of surya vamsha there are two vamshas two dynasties in the material world surya vamsha chandra vamsha krishna took birth in chandra vamsha lord ramchandra king ragu king sagara and radharani they all took birth in surya vamsha <clears throat> the dynasty of the sun so king dilip was also the king in the dynasty of sun and he was a great devotee of krishna and also of cows especially one time he went to swarga loka and he had some work but um, he forgot to offer his pranams to cow that is kamadhenu kamadhenu did not mind but because lord loves the cows very much when kamadhenu was not offered obeisances by king dilip he received a curse unknowingly to him that he will not have a son so king dilip did not even know also that he has got the curse he came back and for many many years he did not have any child he was wondering wondering what happened so he you know vasishta muni is the guru of uh, surya vamsha not only for lord ram but he is there right from the beginning of surya vamsha he was there during king ragu ragu's time also he was there in time of king sagar also so king dilip went to his guru vasishtha and said guru maharaj please tell me what is the problem why i am not getting son so vasishtha being trikaladarshi he saw in his uh, past that he actually not offered dandavat to kamadenu that's why he received a curse unknowingly and that's why he's not getting son so king dilip said oh i didn't even, didn't even know that please tell me how do i atone for my sin so king dilip said that that kamadhenu is now at the moment of time in swarga loka but her daughter nandini is with me she is also equally powerful as as much as kamadhenu you serve her and you please her and by that service of cow you will become freed from the sin of offending kamadhenu so king dilip anyway he was a gau bhakta so he really served nandini is like anything and uh, he he became really successful in pleasing her so she wanted to test him so one day uh, kamadenu uh, nandini was there king king dilip was there and a tiger came to eat up nandini and tiger was about to attack nandini and that time king dilip said that please don't eat nandini eat me so tiger said are what about tiger or lion some people say lion doesn't matter but uh, king dilip said tiger said why are you giving your precious life for this animal you are supposed to be king you are the amsha of the supreme lord as a king you are like god only for the people you represent god your life is very important you you are the uh, maintainer of millions of people on the universe billions of people on the universe living entities also used to be subjects of kings those days so you should leave if one cow goes another cow will come what's a big thing at that time whatever king dilip said please hear carefully he said the whole human civilization in the whole material world is based on the existence of cows cow is the first basis of vedic civilization after the cow brahmins are there for the second basis after the brahmins there are vedas because they are the propagator of vedas so third thing important is vedas and fourth thing important in vedic civilization is chaste women sati 
सती माता एंड फिफ्थ सिक्स एंड सेवेंथ आर ट्रुथफुल मैन मैन फ्री ऑफ ग्रीड एंड मैन फ्री ऑफ एनवी दिस थ्री काइंड ऑफ मैन मैन फ्री ऑफ एनवी मैन फ्री ऑफ ग्रीड एंड मैन हु आर सत्य वचनी हु आर ट्रुथफुल इन देयर एक्टिविटीज इन देयर थॉट्स एंड इन देयर इन देयर वर्ड्स दिस सेवन थिंग्स आर बेसिस एंड ऑल दिस सेवन थिंग्स आर बेस्ड ऑन काउ so if i die nothing will happen another king will come but cow should be maintained so the alliance said okay if you are so determined get ready to die so the king bowed down his head to allow the tiger or lion to jump on him and devour him so he bowed down and the lion jumped in the sky to dive on the body of king dilip so he was ready to be devoured devoured when when as soon as the lion jumped in the air leaped in the air he came down as a garland and fell in the neck of the king dilip there was no more lion he was lord shiva actually who had come in the form of a lion to test and then nandini became very pleased because nandini was testing him so then king dilip gave birth to king ragu the great ragu of ragu dynasty of whom ragunandan we call lord ramchandra ragunandan and then in that vamsha uh, there was a king called abhay karna who was brought by shatrugna in dwap in treta yuga to braj bhumi to establish the kingdom abhay karma abhay karna during ramayan time ruled mathura mandal braj bhumi and then in his vamsha king rashanga came up and then king rashanga was the first one who actually established barsana dham as a kingdom and in his vamsha then kunja bhanu appeared then mahi bhanu appeared and mahi bhanu gave birth to nine sons and the fifth son of mahi bhanu was vrish bhanu maharaj and vrish bhanu maharaj also happens to be the incarnation of sun god surya devata so this is second ithihas of barsana the third story of barsana is very interesting how uh, chaste ladies are so powerful actually we have to understand that if men who are chaste just by their chastity and by brahmacharya two things brahmacharya also means chastity huh? brahma acharati iti brahmachari one who performs his life activities based on the understanding of brahman he is brahmachari not that who doesn't get married he is called unmarried avivahit he is not a brahmachari one who dwells in the consciousness of brahman is brahmachari so very high concept so uh, similarly a, ch- a lady who is chaste to her husband just by her chastity she can reach brahma loka like the brahmachari just by his chastity a brahmachari can reach brahma loka and what to speak of that if he couples up his brahmachari and chastity with devotion to god these two things itself can take one step to golok vrindavan chastity and krishna bhakti so in the heavenly planets which were presided by three uh, demigods brahma vishnu mahesh trinity there were discussion was going on who is the best chaste lady in the whole creation and naturally the wives of brahma vishnu mahesh they were thinking who who else but us it has to be one of one of us so they were looking at each other very happily that now one of our name will be announced as the best chaste lady in the whole creation but to their utter surprise the three demi three gods said that it is not any of you so they were very surprised they said uh, if he is not amongst us then who is that person we want to know so the three gods said that that is sati anasuya she is on the earth she is the wife of atri muni now they were not like us you know envious or something but they wanted sati anasuya's glories to be known to the whole world they wanted her actually to her to manifest her glories so they said to husband in the guise of uh, little being jealous they said no no we will not accept this uh, best position as uh, chaste lady you have to go and test her and prove that she is the best one 
So they said, okay. So three the three gods, Brahma, Vishnu, Mahesh, they went down on earth at the uh, in the village of Atri Muni's hermitage, and then they said at the door, Bhavati, Bhikshan, Dehi. They had gone in the form of Rishi as a sadhu, you know, to beg beg alms. At that time, uh, Atri Anasuya Devi was busy serving her husband in the morning prayers, morning sadhana, morning puja. And uh, Atri Muni is a great soul, actually. After some time, she appeared on the door and she brought, said, okay, come, have food. So the three, three uh, rishis said, we will take food from your hands only on one condition, that you have to remove all your clothes and then feed us. So she immediately, as being a very chaste and intelligent lady, she understood there's some trick here. So she said, okay, I'll just come in a minute. So she went inside and brought the Kamandalu. Kamandalu had water of uh, morning puja that is called Abhimantrit Jal. That means the remnants, remnant water, which is filled with great potency of the puja done by his, her great husband, Atri Muni. And she had so much faith in her husband. So she brought that water with in Kamandalu, took some water in the hand and sprinkled on the three demigods. That is Rishi form. Immediately, the three Rishis became naked children. Three naked boys, small toddlers, crawling babies. Now, in front of small naked babies, a lady doesn't have anything to uh, feel shy to be naked. So she put them on the ground and she served them without wearing any clothes. Now the boys, they were so attached in short time with Mother Anasuya that they stayed there only as babies. They really loved being babies. They never expected that they'll become babies like this. But they were very happy with the love, loving, uh, you know, loving Vatsalya that they were receiving. And they were uh, enjoying and long time they stayed there. Now suppose, suppose your exam is there. Suppose you go to exam from home. What, do you, what does your wife or uh, mother expect? Oh, he'll come back in the evening. Three hours exam, going one hour, coming back one hour, five, six hours, he has to come back. So they were expecting that husbands will come back after the test, but they never came back. Many, many days passed. So the wives of these three gods became very upset. And they came down on earth. They knew, of course, where the husband had gone to take exams of Anasuya. So they came and they said, uh, Mother Anasuya, where are our husbands? So she said, look, they are playing there. <laughs> they were toddling you know, without wearing any clothes. They were roaming in the ground there. So she, they, all the three ladies begged to Sati Anasuya, please, Mother Anasuya, please release our husbands. We, we understand, we accept you as the most chaste lady in the whole creation. We are very much fortunate to have your darshan and also bless us that we also can become chaste like you. But right at this moment of time, please give our husbands back. So what she did, again she brought the Kamandalu of her husband of that day's puja and sprinkled the water on the three boys and immediately the three boys became Brahma, Vishnu, Mahesh. All glories. And they were about to leave. They bowed down to Mother Anasuya and while going they said, Mother, we are so attached to you. We don't feel like going from here. But anyway, now we have sprinkled water and made us back Brahma, Vishnu, Mahesh, so we have to go now. Can we have a benediction from you that we will become actually your son from your womb and we will we'll become your children? So she said, Tathastu. So then Brahma took birth as Chandra Devata from Mother Anasuya. Vishnu took birth as Dattatreya and Shiva took birth as Durvasamuni. They actually took birth from her womb and become their children. Now the story doesn't end over here. While going and while giving the benediction, all these things were not told that it happened in future. But the boon was given that time. At the same time, she also cursed them. She said, you came and tested my chastity. This is offense. I curse you. For this offense, you'll become stone. You'll become a stone. So as a result of that curse, Brahma became stone in Barsana. Lord Vishnu became stone in Govardhan, as Govardhan. And Lord Shiva became stone as Nandishwar in Nandagaon. And you will be very surprised to know 
in Devi Bhagavat it is mentioned that in one of the kalpas, Lord Ramachandra in Treta Yuga, one of the kalpas, Lord Ramachandra personally established these three mountains in Braj Bhumi. Pratishthapana. So this is story of uh, Anasuya connected with Barsana, Vrindavan and Nandigao. Now the fourth story of history is the story of Lord Brahma. Now all of you know that Lord Brahma, you know, he uh, created, he was born, first of all, on the lotus coming from the navel of Vishnu. And then um, he was in darkness, he was in ignorance, he didn't know what's happening around him, why he was created, what he's supposed to do, where is he. And then Krishna enlightened him with uh, Chatushloki Bhagavat. And he was fully enlightened within no time. It's like, you know, it's like uh, you, you don't even have to eat the food or digest the food. The, the ATP molecule of energy is given to you directly, straight. There's no need to eat and you know, taste and digest and you know, take the assimilation and take glucose and fatty acids and amino acid essential items to survive and which is ultimately a molecule of ATP. Something like that. No need of study, no need of anything. Straight realizations of the ultimate truth in fullest possible extent was transferred in the heart of Brahma. So Brahma, of course, came to know when this uh, transfer of knowledge took place that this world is a miserable place. That was his first realization. And he also felt very compassionate in all the fallen conditioned souls. And then he also realized that I am also one of them. I am also born as one of the part and parcel of Krishna. I am not something like great uh, personality of Vishnu or something. I am also Amsha of Krishna, like any other entities. So what I need is his realization was, just imagine, when do you feel or understand that you have understood everything? What is the test for that? When do you, when you understand that I need the dust from the lotus feet of Krishna, Radharani and the Brijvasis, that time you are understood to have understood everything. This is the test. Like Uddhav, what was his test? That he understood everything, the ultimate reality of life. He really wanted to have the dust of the gopis. He thought that is the ultimate thing I need to achieve in my life. He achieved everything in the life. He thought before I achieved everything. But then when he got this understanding, he was actually fully realized the purpose for which Krishna sent him to Vrindavan Dham was fulfilled that time because he had that realization. So similarly, you and me will be understood to have understood everything only when we develop this strong desire that we want to receive the dust of Radharani and gopis and coward boys. So Brahma performed tapasya to attain the dust of Radha and Krishna. First, 60,000 years of his first Satya Yuga. And imagine, after such a long time, there was no response. Now he couldn't just go on performing tapasya, who will do the work? So he had to go to office and do the creation part. So Satya Yuga is equal to 17 lakhs 28,000 years. Say 17, 28,000 years is Satya Yuga. So first 60,000 is gone. Remaining everything he did his service and the last 60,000, somebody can calculate. If you remove 100, 20,000 years from 1728, how much is remaining? 1610. Is that right? 1608,000 years he served. 1608,000 of years, that means 16,8,000 years. And 1,20,000 years he performed tapasya. Half before, half in the end. So at the end of his 120,000 years tapasya, Sri Krishna appeared to him. And he said, yes, my dear Brahma, what do you want? Brahma said, I've understood that I need your lotus feet, dust on my head. You, your coward boys, your gopis, Radharani. So he said, go to Vrindavan. He said, Vrindavan is very big. Where should I go in Vrindavan? So Krishna said, 
Brishabhanu Puram Gatwa. Please go to Brishabhanu Pur. That is one of the name of Barsana. And there you become mountain. And there we will perform our pastimes on your head. So naturally you will receive the dust that you want very easily. And that's how Brahma became Brahmachala. The four-headed four -headed Brahma became four mountain peaks in Barsana. This is the fourth history. And there are so many histories, okay? But these are the main histories to understand so that we can really appreciate where we are entering. Now see the mood of Krishna. Krishna himself come to take dust here. Everybody in the creation goes to Vrindavan to take dust of Krishna, his lotus feet. Why? Why there's no dust everywhere else? He was saying he's in Golok Gol Vrindavan also. No. Everywhere he wears footwear of jewel, jeweled, jeweled footwear. Everywhere he has to walk, they put carpet for him, velvet carpet. Wherever he has to go, there's a chariot for him. So there is, uh, covering his lotus feet is the footwear. Then under his footwear, there is a red carpet. And if he has to go long distance, there's a chariot. So where is the touch of the uh, lotus feet to the ground? There is no touch. Only because he gives up all opulences in Vrindavan Dham, his lotus feet touch the ground only in Vrindavan Dham. That is why how the dust is created when the feet touches the ground, the dust is created. I mean, the, the dust becomes the dust of the lotus feet of Krishna. For that, Krishna's feet has to touch the dust. That possibility is there only in Vrindavan Dham. So all the demigods, all the rishis, all the tapasvis, all the dhyanis, everybody comes to Vrindavan to receive the dust of Krishna's lotus feet and to his devotees' lotus feet also. But that personality whose dust is sorted after, sought after by everybody, where does he go? He goes to Barsana because he knows there Radharani is walking barefoot. So to receive her dust and the gopis, he goes there. Then I told you already, he assumes Sakhi Vesha. That means a mood of servitude. Then I told, I wrote about Rasa. Rasa means the Ras. We have, ras, we have got five Rasas. Shantaras, Dasyaras, Sakyaras, Vatsalyaras, Madhuriras. Out of 13 Rasas, the five are most prominent. Five are the most prominent loving Rasas. So, the Ras concept begins from Radharani. Krishna begs that from Radharani and receives it as Bhiksha from Radharani. Then he does the development, Rasa Vikas. Then he does Rasa Prakash and he thus becomes Rasaraj. He is known as Rasaraj, no doubt. But the Rasa that is required to become Rasaraj is received from Radharani. Radharani's lotus feet, when she walks, the ankle bells, when they sound, when they make some sound, from that sound, Vedas are created. All the Vedic hymns are created when she walks. She is Krishna's Radha Sanjivani. That means the sustenance of Krishna is by Radharani. Now, um, Radharani, wherever she stays in Barsana, there's supposed to be golden effulgence coming out of that place. That is Radharani's stage. Radharani's effulgence. And there is something called as blue, blue effulgence in Nandagaon. But Radharani's effulgence is always covering and influencing the blue effulgence of Nandagaon. There are two reasons. One is that her effulgence is very powerful, more powerful than Krishna's effulgence. And second, Krishna is unable to stay without her. That is why Krishna, to console Krishna, to pacify Krishna, the Gaura effulgence, the golden effulgence of Radharani pacifies by covering the blue effulgence so that Krishna can sustain himself when he is not with Radharani. Now, I will tell you the story of Jayadeva Goswami in short. Jayadeva Goswami uh, was much before Gorang Mahaprabhu in 7th century. And um, he was writing Geet Govinda at Champahati in Kolad Dvipa. 
the long story to cut short he was not writing something which was imagining he was always writing what he was seeing whatever darshan he was receiving drishtanta or um, um, realization in the form of a vision he would actually witness the past times of krishna and he would write down geet govinda was written down not by composing rhymes you know geet govinda was written down by seeing whatever was given darshan by the lord so one time he was watching in his darshan that uh, in his vision that radharani is angry upset and krishna is trying to pacify her and in the process of pacifying her shri krishna was bowing down to her she was not listening then he removed his peacock peacock crown and put it on her lotus feet number 2 action she did not budge then he actually bowed down his head crownless head to her lotus feet she did not budge then he rolled under the dust in the dust under her lotus feet still she did not get pacified a few things one is he is pleading to her saying sorry second putting his uh, peacock feather crown on her feet that is a big big thing that means a defeated king always does that third thing he actually put his head on her head on her uh, lotus feet and fourth thing he rolled in the dust which was under her feet and jayadev could not just uh, take this you know he was just, he couldn't tolerate this he was not expecting this that krishna would do this so he couldn't write he saw but he could not write he was he was too too uh, tensed or too too stressed up so he told his wife padmavati that i want to go to ganga and take bath and you know cool myself my head is very hot she didn't know what happened actually but she said okay i when i'll come back i'll take my lunch so he went and uh, within few minutes he came back when he came back he said padmavati i am very hungry please uh, give me food so she said two minutes i am just getting things ready so he went inside the room where he was writing and he completed the verse which he could not complete that he could not write that that krishna is bowing down to radharani's lotus feet and one two three four things that he is doing couldn't write but that was completed by jayadev goswami and he came out he was relieved from his stress he came out his wife served him nice prasad very lovingly he ate all the prasadam and he said okay i'll go out and come back as soon as he went out immediately came back he said padmavati i am very hungry please feed me padmavati was surprised he said swami what happened you just came and ate he said what i never came i was in uh, at the banks of ganga trying to cool my head i was so much stressed i was meditating and praying i was not understanding what to do i was all the time at the bank of ganga sir swami you came so then he was also bewildered so he said tell me what i did he said you came and he told me that i want to have my food and i said two minutes and then you went inside and you wrote down something and you came out and i fed you so really so he went inside and he saw he knew his handwriting of course but wherever he had stopped he could not write further and he saw further to that pearl like handwriting and some verses which he did not write was were written over there which meant one two three four things krishna did and he was completely in ecstasy he understood that lord madhav lord krishna himself came and wrote this verse so he told padmavati you are so fortunate shri krishna madhava himself came to you ate from your hands gave darshan to you you are so fortunate and both of them fell unconscious in ecstasy that means why i told the story to you that krishna is so humble that krishna himself came down and wrote that verse which meant that he bows down he puts his crown at the feet of radharani he puts his head on the lotus feet of radharani he rolls in the dust of barsana under the feet of radharani he does all that he didn't have any hesitation any sankoch or any embarrassment he himself came and wrote those verses 
himself in one sense accepted as yes 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 i do these things yes 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 what you saw is right it is not a illusion it's a fact that i do this regularly in barsana this is krishna's mood that's why i told you this history is important to understand how does krishna enter barsana how does krishna conduct himself in barsana how does krishna do things in barsana how does he maintain his mood it doesn't become five minutes in that mood and whole day in a kingly mood again radharani comes again he is subservient again he is in kingly mood no all the time all the time all the time he is in this mood only he maintains his mood in fact this is his original mood actually when he goes to dwarka and vaikuntha and to other holy places that is something called as dutiful mood huh that is his job description he has to be a lord he has to conduct himself he has to create he has to maintain he has to annihilate he has to empower other people that is his job description so he is in the official mood that time he is in the office mood but his original sai bhav is what is there in vrindavan and barsana you should understand that so with this we'll go to the next now something very important has come up on the slide that is the name of radharani shri radha this is not simply a name or a word this is a deity and the deity is dressed up with decoration here there is a shringar around that please understand this very carefully shri radha is not simply a name it's a personality the name itself is a personality and the name is decorated here with shringar with some beautiful strokes of colors and flowers and design we have to also approach radharani's name with this kind of mood it is a deity it has to be it is worshipable the name of radharani radha naam bada sukhdai radha naam bada sukhdai and there is one devotee this baba i forgot his name but this personality is such a great personality that from his youth since he became a sadhu till he died last year his only service was to paint these names everywhere in braj bhumi in 84 crores all over on the trees on the walls and the every single place you will see the name of radha it was written by only one person only one person you can see this was his seva and meditation all the time he would paint these names not in the mood of a painter in the mood of doing shringar of radharani's name how important radharani's name that he has exemplified in his life and such hundreds of designs he would create on the walls of braj bhumi every single tree he had painted these beautiful names with such decorations you can see please bow down to this maharaj he is one of the great souls whose whole life was simply dedicated to write the names and decorate the names and the shringar of radharani's name in all over braj bhumi he traveled by foot to all the 84 crores of braj mandal it takes people to do 40 days for walking parikrama he would walk everywhere sit for hours in one place under one tree in front of one wall in front of one uh, some, something and he would keep painting the whole day and then go to the next place he would beg for the material of painting the painting the brush and everything i am very happy to tell you that bhakti vidanta hospital also has provided him many brushes and colors at one point of time he was asking for so we purchased and then the, uh, the cost was not taken from him it was just donated to him because he was in such wonderful service our uh, doctors and staff at barsana hospital which we are now running and in future going to build the hospital the staff and the doctors who are devotees they also have served this baba madhukri and donations they have given to paint the pictures of radharani's names in braj i will show you one more picture you can see how beautiful more than the design the bhav is so beautiful 
what is the power in radha rani's name she said that as soon as she was born by krishna from krishna's body she ran ha huh? hayati she ran to pluck pluck pick up flowers to please krishna so this is one one meaning of radha rani as soon as she was born she ran to the flower garden to pluck flowers for krishna's pleasure another meaning of radha's name is ra is when you say ra you get freed from all the sins you get freed from the entanglement in the womb of the mother garbhavas you get freed from all the karma bandhana and dha means as soon as you say dha after getting freed from all the karmas krishna runs behind you dhavat dhavat yaiva sa sambramaha by getting bewildered by getting mesmerized shri krishna runs behind that person's name who calls radha that means who calls hare hare also is radha only hara is radha and hare is radhe the calling so when we say radha radha is name radhe is calling hara is the name and hare is the calling sita is the name and sita is the calling so whenever we say hare hare krishna why we say hare before why, we, why don't we say radha hare radha hare radha hare nahi why, why, why don't you say krishna hare krishna hare krishna krishna hare hare why don't you say that we say hare krishna hare krishna because we know that krishna will not listen to us but if we call his radha rani's name he will look at us so we call radha rani's name first make krishna look at us and then we call his name so he is listening to his name also and radha rani's name also we can go on discussing but time is not so much for discussing the radha naam mahima one thing i will tell you ragunath das goswami says in stav mala that if you chant the name of radha rani that means we are chanting every day in hari krishna maha mantra ha huh? how many times in 16 month worded mantra eight times we chant radha rani's name only there are eight haris and four krishnas and four ramas right so in the 16 worded mantra eight are radha rani's names and ragunath das goswami says that one who chants radha's name there is no bhajan higher than that in the whole universe in the whole creation of krishna there is no more no more sadhana more powerful than that that's why chaitanya mahaprabhu has given us the top most of all sadhanas to chant the name of radha and krishna in the form of hare krishna maha mantra hare krishna hare krishna 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 hare 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 ram hare ram 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 hare hare so this is sri radha very merciful standing in front of us and then we can see here few things which to understand radha is um, teaching krishna flute krishna is known as murli manohar mesmerizing murli he plays he plays murli and everybody gets mad completely mad the rivers the clouds the demigods the stars the cows ha uh, the gopis lord shiva lord chandra everybody gets mad completely mesmerized mahavishnu in in the karana ocean he gets mad he wakes up and starts rolling when krishna plays flute you know he is in yoga nidra always sleeping but when krishna plays flute on earth he wakes up in karana ocean and starts rolling with the tune of the flute of krishna so krishna is celebrated artist of flute but radha rani is his teacher of flute flute playing krishna has learned from radha rani at the banks of yamuna you can see the student is sitting and the teacher is teaching you can see the student is learning from the teacher teacher is teaching how to play the flute what else she has taught she has taught everything to krishna actually every single thing that krishna has and krishna knows is taught by her and one more prominent thing that she has taught him is dancing is nitya kala so he is natraj he is famous it is said that he when he dances sometimes his uh, ankle bells they are flying 2 to 2 miles away and they are lost and mother yashoda ties 3 3 uh, times 3 3 ankle bells and when he comes back he may be coming only with one because two are already flown off 
while he dances. Such powerful dancer he is, not because he is dancing hard, but he is dancing so skillfully. So when that dance has been taught by Radharani to Krishna. Then we come to the physical map of uh, Prasanna. <clears throat> At the corner there is uh, the four mountains are there. One mountain is Bhanu, Bhanugad, that is Sriji Mandir. Second mountain is Dangad, which is over here. Third mountain is Vilasgad, which is over here. My arrow is moving there. Between Dangad and Vilasgad, there is a narrow path called Sankri Kor. And then there is the fourth mountain over here, Mangad. And the fifth peak is also there, which is not the part of the head of Brahma, but it is Morkuti. It's also on the mountain. So this is the whole picture of Barsana in short. Now, I will tell you something very essential about Barsana. Barsana is known for four things. Please write down. One is Khor, K-H-O-R. That means narrow pathway. Sakri means narrow. Sakri Khor. Although it is only one path in whole Barsana, it is extremely important ingredient of Barsana Dham. Then second is Khirak. Khirak is K-H-I-R-A-K. Khirak is water pond or water reservoir. Or you can say Talab, Sarovar. And there are not one. Shankri is only one, but there are many water reservoirs. There is Bihar Kunda, there is Dhoni Kunda, there is Pili Pokar, there is Brishmanu Kunda, there is Kritida Kunda and Prem Sarovar and Prem Vival Kunda, like that. So second part is Khirak. Third part is Giri. Barsana is especially known for its very beautiful four mountain peaks. Very, very beautiful four mountain peaks. It is known for that. So the four mountain peaks are Bhanugad, Dangad, Vilasgad, and Mangad. Another name of Barsana is Var Sanyu. Var Sanyu means Sanyu means beautiful, and Var means the peaks. The place where there are four beautiful mountain peaks is called Barsana. Another meaning of Barsana is Hindi mein wahan par hamesha ras baraste rehta hai. Always the rasa is getting, sh all, always showering all, all over the creation from that place is Barsana. So th three things I told. One is Khor, Khirak, Khor and Khirak, then Giri and fourth is Uncomparable. It's called Gaivar. What is Gaivar? Gaivar is a forest which is created by Radharani herself. In the map, you can see it begins at the bottom of Sriji Mandir and it continues all the way, covering all the mountains and covering one more village called Chiksoli. That is Chitrasakhi's village. That is called Chikitsapur. So, Barsana is the township. It's like a whirl of the lotus. And there are eight petals of the lotus and eight petals are the villages of eight Sakhis. The Ashta Sakhis of Radharani, they live on those eight petals, which are eight villages. So, one of the villages is Chikitsapur or Chiksoli, which is the village of Chitra Sakhi, where our hospital is going to come up, is in the village of Chitra Sakhi. Where Radhanath Maharaj stayed is also in this village, Chiksoli. Because Chiksoli also contains Man Mandir. So, Gehavar Ban begins from the bottom at the, at the, um, it begins from Bhanugad. It covers all the forests, all the four mountain peaks and also covers Chiksoli village. And Radharani has herself created that particular forest. So, I'll repeat, Khor, Khirak, Giri and Gehavar. These four things are most important ingredients of Barsana Dham. Now for you, the darshan is beginning, the four mountain peaks. I am standing on Bhanugad, the house of Radharani. That's why I am on one mountain and I am having three mountains in the picture. The first mountain in the picture is Bangad. Second mountain is Vilasgad. Third mountain is behind, that is Mangad. Now you can see, little closer, again I am on the same mountain, you can see here 
on the left side of mine is dan gard in between is vilas gard then there is more kuti which is not the part of the four hills but another peak and behind there is man gard 1 2 and 3 and fourth one i am standing on now this is closer by this is more kuti behind is vilas gard and on left side is dan gard and further more closer on left side is dan gard in between more kuti and behind is vilas gard and behind that is man gard this is a close by darshan of more kuti in front of you and behind there is a white structure that is called vilas gard and this is where i was standing before this is manu gard this is the house of radha rani now which is temple of radha rani ladli lal temple huh? ladli lal temple this one i was standing here all the time taking the pictures now i am taking picture from down and this is the home of radha rani radha rani resided and radha rani resides eternally over here now this is called as bhanu mahal and now from close by for your understanding this is bhanugarh this is dangarh this is vilasgarh and this is mangarh and this is morkuti and this is radha rani's mandir from far distance as sunset time very very beautiful darshan of sunset time <clears throat> again radha rani's temple darshan from distance now this photo has been taken from dangarh this is barsana township a very fortunate township where people live in this place people can take birth here only by the mercy of radha rani all those who are surrendered their lives in shuddha bhakti and prem nirpeksh bhakti they only can take birth here and when they take birth here it's their last birth if they commit offenses they'll come back again take birth here only as donkeys or as uh, asses or as uh, Uh, pigs or whatever and suffer but they will take birth here only and then they will finish all their karmas and they'll from here only they'll go back to godhead to goloka vrindavan so once one takes birth here this is their last birth or the last place that they are taking birth so they are very fortunate people why we are serving in barsana what is the need from all the way from here there are poor people nearby also in thane district we also go there of course but along with this place why we go to barsana all the way because we want to receive the blessings of radha rani that is a inner secret internally we want to please radha rani by serving her dear devotees please them and with their pleasure radha rani is pleased and we receive the mercy of radha rani and that mercy of radha rani we bring to bhakti vedanta hospital so that we serve people in bhakti vedanta hospital with the blessings of radha rani that is our bhav and externally definitely they are poor people they are going blind so we we urge ourselves it's our inner longing to go and give them vision because they, we know that if they get the eyesight they're not going to watch nonsense movies or some rocky rock ball bollywood star shows huh or television they are going to run to other rani's temple to take darshan they are going to run to open their books of scriptures and do their part and read bhagavatam read stories and they will relish the beauty of radha rani's darshan every morning for mangal aarti so doing an eye operation in mumbai in some rural area in thane district and doing an eye operation in barsana there is there is there is unlimited difference unlimited difference the kind of mercy that you receive the blessing that you receive is unimaginable it's not not just a mechanical seva or samaj seva it's a divine service of the lotus feet of radha rani so this is the fortunate village we always go up and always gaze at this beautiful township because all those uh, souls who may not look beautiful who may not be educated who may not be very cultured who may not be very highly sophisticated like we think we should be and we are they are none of these things they have nothing to be proud of you know we have our high birth to be proud of we have our education to be proud of 
we have our wealth to be proud of and we have so many things to be proud of but rather than he keeps them in such a mood in such a situation that they neither have high birth nor have high education nor have high culture nor have high sophistication nor have influence nothing they have why she keeps them like that because she doesn't want to make uh, make them proud she doesn't want to make them feel proud there's nothing nothing there to feel proud with them she is keeping them in such a state that they will be always under her shelter of her mercy that's why we run from here all the way all throughout the year is served because we want them to um, be able to see and to visualize radharani's darshan and then bless us in return so before we enter barsana we chant one mantra a prayer om klaum prishbhanupur adibanapataye radha krishnaya sadaha prishbhanupur is categorized as adiban the forest is categorized in four four ways adiban ban upavan and pratiban the four categories depending on the size so prishbhanupur barsana is categorized as adiban so prishbhanu maharaj is adibanapati and that is adibanapataye prishbhanupur so we are offering radha krishna and prishbhanu our humble obeisances then we say radhaya samhitam krishnam ब्रह्म पर्वत संस्थित वंदे प्रदक्षिणा सांग सर्वदा बरदायक सो वी से दैट दिस पर्टिक्युलर प्लेस कॉल्ड बरसाना ब्रह्मा वॉज ब्लेस्ड टू बिकम अ माउंटेन इट लुक्स लाइक अ कर्स टू बिकम माउंटेन हियर बट इट्स अ ग्रेटेस्ट ब्लेसिंग बिकॉज बाय बिकमिंग माउंटेन इज कॉन्स्टंटली रिसीविंग द डस्ट फ्रॉम द लोटस फीट ऑफ राधा एंड कृष्णा एंड द गोपीज एंड द कॉवर्ड बॉयज so vande pradakshana nam sanga by performing pradakshana of barsana you will get continuously blessed sarvada varadayakam with this prayer we go ahead and now we come to brahma ji you should know that brahma ji few lines i will tell about his glories is all glorious even by any any standards how because you see some some people are having uh one person at home 100 year old and he proudly sits in middle and he has got four sons he's got four wives of four sons and then each son has four four sons so they are also married and they have their four four wives on each four sons and then there are about 50 60 people and there is a group photo and this old man 100 age years age is sitting in between very proudly saying this 60 people is my dynasty such a big family i have got this is what i have created i am the root cause of all these things huh? but brahma ji if he takes his family picture what kind of camera he will require can you imagine because all the 84 lakhs of species are his children and each species has got billions upon trillions upon uh, no quadrillions and pentillions and i cannot say further if each species has got and then human beings are there and demigods are there and then uh, everybody is there in the universe all are his children only all snakes all birds all animals all fishes all trees everybody are his children so if he plans to take a group picture how how that tree will how the picture will look as look like how proud he should be that is the creator of everybody anybody would you see living he is the child of brahma this is his material appearance but the real appearance is spiritual what is real appearance he is the first citizen of the universe like we have mayor as a first citizen of mumbai city or we have uh, president of america as a first citizen of america or prime minister of india as a first citizen of india he is the first citizen of the whole universe brahmanda he has topmost position he is just next to krishna from krishna he is born and from them from from him everybody is born so he is a number 2 position in the whole universe and closest person to krishna for what he has become from the topmost position he has performed 120000 years of tapasya just to become a stone imagine we do tapasya to rise from our position to a higher position but this person has done tapasya from his highest position to become mr nothing 
that is his greatness we have to understand that it is not easy to become uh, to become a bhangi from the position of prime minister huh? a a tea seller can become prime minister but a prime minister doesn't become tea seller please understand a tea seller will strive and strive and strive and work hard and hard and hard finally to become a prime minister of india but after becoming prime minister of india one does not sell tea on the railway station that's not possible but our lord brahma has done that you can become an ant you can become a, a unicellular amoeba or paramecium you can become the uh, neutron or or electron in the atom but stone is much below that also the stone means mr nothing there is no movement no personality anybody can do anything on you walk on you pass stool and urine on you anything anything can be done that's how you can't say only krishna comes here others cannot come here it's not like that i am i'm only here to take dust of krishna and, and coward boys and radharani and gopis all everybody else all pigs all dogs please go away from here my head is not available for you it's not like that everybody will come on you as a stone as a mountain and brahma has assumed that position simply to accept the dust of radha krishna gopas and gopis so we are now going to climb on the mountain so first of all we offer our pranams to brahma what do we say please o oh brahma forgive us for climbing on you we are climbing on you just to see radha and krishna and to serve her i pray that i become more humble than blade of grass like you have become please help me to give up pride to serve krishna but with the pride in the heart i cannot serve krishna effectively so please help me the way you have given up your pride help us to give up our pride to serve krishna please help us to give up rajoguna and tamoguna so that we can enter barsana in sakhi bhav or seva bhav these are our prayers before we climb up the first step on mountain to climb the mountain we bow down and beg forgiveness from brahma and we promise that we do not perform any sense gratification on the mountain we don't go up to drink lassi to eat bhaji to eat tikki or to eat lassi we don't go up for that we don't go to enjoy on top we only go to see radharani and to serve her with this mood creation we go we climb up the mountain we have climbed the mountain and we have come to a particular level where we see the white temple in front of us please see the white temple this white temple is a very unique temple the main temple is one more level up but this is also very important temple you can see the temple close closely this temple is made of marble other temple is made of uh, red sandstone in this temple radharani comes three times in a year down with sham sundar ji they are called as ladili lal ladili means radharani lal means krishna so you can see that on the day of hariyali tej which is a festival of uh, beginning of julan yatra on that day radharani comes down and uh, resides here from 4:30 in the evening to 7:30 in the evening second festival is holi festival on the day of holi also ladli lal dts they come down and stay there for 3 hours in the evening and the third festival is radha ashtami on the day of birth of radharani on that festival at 4:30 in the evening radharani comes down and stays for 3 hours the unique feature of this place is all throughout the year radharani's dts are served only by goswamis and the family members but when she comes down 3 times in a year all the other all kinds of castes may there be from any caste non brahminical caste all the people will come and serve radharani here and they are there is no hesitation you can bring bring offerings and flowers and garlands and any other kinds of offerings the uh, people bring they are accepted by radharani when she comes down over here another unique feature of this place is all of the men are performing the puja on the top throughout the year but when she comes down for 3 hours in the evening time the daughters of the goswamis perform the worship so when we when we see men performing worship it is called aarati what is it called aarati 
and when the girls perform worship when she comes down is called aarta so when she comes down at 4:30 one aarta is performed by one daughter of goswami at 7:30 one other aarta is performed by one daughter of the goswami and then she goes up this is another unique feature of this place so let us all go around this temple bow down because radharani comes here thrice in a year and now we climb up see this particular step, uh, stairs are you can see there one man on right side you can see one man on right side he is climbing or getting down the same place we are now climbing up to go to the highest level this is the final stairs and now we come inside the temple room this is the jagamohan mandap of radharani's temple ladili lal temple you can see she is now going to come out because she is further inside you can see in this she is far far inside where my arrow is there is one level down here you climb from few steps up then another small level is there where hundreds of people are standing and the inside one door is there inside the door there is radharani's dt is there so where the yellow board is there she comes out there in this place see where somebody is sponsoring some rajbhoga chappan bhoga special aarti special festival that time she comes out it can be on any day but on special days she does come out and we have darshan of radharani ladili lal these deities were made by vajranaba krishna's great grandson he made this deity and established a temple where radharani was staying with her father her mother her brother sridama and younger daughter younger sister ananga manjari so you can see very closely just don't uh, see it uh, in a very routine way you can see very 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 closely there is one one dupatta radharani is wearing see this this is on the head of radharani which is meant for radharani only it is her her dupatta her sakhi dupatta and this one is there behind big one you can see the green border of peacock's peacock feathers this is supposed to be for krishna this is krishna's dupatta krishna's chunri so krishna is becoming sakhi over here because without becoming sakhi no man can go inside barsana so krishna is always remaining in sakhi bhav and in sakhi vesha krishna is playing flute you can see here and amazingly you will see there is no flower on the on the body of krishna why is that because this photo was taken in the winter season at odan shashti time they stop offering flowers to radharani because it is cold because it is cold so only on vasant panchami day again the flower offerings take place so what garland you see here is only of the pearls all the garlands are made of only only the uh, beads and all the jewels and the flowers are only loose one flower here one flower here and uh, one flower over here and there is a lotus feet also you can see here some glimpse is there here so this is a winter time we are taken the picture that's how the things are like this this same picture is also put up in uh, govardhan eco village in barsana this is another darshan now i told you that she comes out here on this uh, yellow decoration that how that time they look like this they are they are brought outside and we can see them from very close here there are garlands because it is after vasanta panchami this is radharani's baby form on radhashtami day this is radharani's another form now please hold your breath please hold your breath to see something very special this is radharani's lotus feet of radhashtami 2020 26 august 2020 we had radhashtami this year and for the first time we got the photograph of radharani's actual lotus feet with some yogurt abhishek also at her feet you can see please take darshan please touch her lotus feet this is the most impossible situation that we have achieved this year corona corona people are all giving bad words to corona but corona has done many 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 good things one of the good things that we have uh we have received the picture of radharani's abhishekam at the same time lotus feet photograph so all the prayers that you want to offer please offer over here this is the goal of our life man yaad karo
मन याद करो राधा रानी के चरण महारानी के चरण दिस इज वॉट यू वॉट यू आर सींग इज एक्चुअली दी साधना ऑफ कृष्णा दिस इज साधना ऑफ कृष्णा कृष्णा इज ऑलवेज रिमेम्बरिंग द लोटस फीट ऑफ राधा रानी इन द कॉर्ट यार्ड ऑफ इज हार्ट तो प्लीज ऑफर यूर प्रेयर्स हार्ट फेल्ट प्रेयर्स In the meantime, I will check whether my daughter is coming to sing or not. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. It's a once in lifetime opportunity. We don't know whether next year we'll get the photograph or not, but this year we got photographs of all. Abhishekam of Radhastami, Abhishek of photographs, Abhishek videos, everything we got this year. And now, please hold your breath to see the um, lotus face of Radharani. This is Radharani's lotus face. This is the Radharani. What you are seeing in the picture here. This is the Radharani. Which you are seeing here. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. So when we are standing in front of Radha Rani, we have to offer this prayer. Please fold your hands, and I will chant, and you will listen to my words. Nama Priya Yai Radha Yai, Brahmano Varada Yine. सर्वेष्ट फल रम्याय राधा कृष्णाय मूर्त ओ राधे ओ प्रिया राधे प्लीज एक्सेप्ट माय ओबीडियंसेस यू हैव यू हैव ब्लेस्ड लॉर्ड ब्रह्मा यू आर द बेस्ट रिजल्ट ऑफ ऑल वर्शिप्स प्लीज ब्लेस मी दैट मींस बाय ऑल द साधना बाय ऑल द वर्शिप्स बाय ऑल द प्रेयर्स बाय ऑल द तपस्या द गोल इज टू अचीव लोटस फीट द शेल्टर ऑफ राधा रानी And also now, as we have come to Temple of Radha Rani, please take the arati of Radha Rani. This is Radha Rani's arati of Mangal arati in the morning during holy times. That's why you see the color also, the pink color spread out everywhere. Please watch carefully and take the arati of Radha Rani. And what the arati is stuck to is the mound of the dust of Barsana. Every day, the fresh, fresh Barsana dust is collected and made into a mound form. And when the arati is offered. that is stuck in that uh, thing and then people like vishwarup das are waiting closely as soon as the lamp gets over we steal this mound and bring home <laughs> i got some two three at home also and we distribute devotees there because after the lamp is uh, extinguished there is nobody there bothering so we pick up that mound and take home one more lamp you can take hare krishna you can see also people are taking out little little dirt little little dust from that mound and they sometimes people eat on the eat or they put on the forehead that's why you see when it comes it is a very nicely formed mound in the meantime it becomes very crooked because many people have taken out small small bits and pieces of the dust from barsana mound so uh, there are many things to be to be seen i don't have pictures of everything but i will like to show you that uh, in radha rani's temple when you see in front there are two uh, lalita vishaka deities and one vishaka deity on the ground which is not seen and uh, there is a story which i'll tell you tomorrow and when you go uh, up first time when you see brahma ji's murti under brahma ji's murti there is a place called small niche is there where radha rani's footprints are there the goswami tell that is deity what you saw just now the lotus feet that you saw the same size of lotus feet footprints are there in that niche under the brahma's temple and you go come out and take round parikrama of the temple at the end of the parikrama behind the temple there is another place which is a very beautiful place radha rani stands there and she calls out krishna or she signals krishna to nandagaon because nandagaon is seen from there in the skies and 7 feet 7 km distance 
So when she signals Krishna from there, she is in ecstasy, and the stones under her feet they melt, and the footprints are formed. So you see Radharani's footprints behind the temple on the singhasan there. So what we have to see is that at the entrance we see Kamadhenu, darshan of Kamadhenu is there. Then we come ahead, we take Brahma's darshan, we take the darshan of lotus footprints, then we take the darshan of the white marble temple, then we climb up, take the darshan of the deities, and imagine that there is one more deity down there of Vishakha Devi. Then we come out, go around, and we see the lotus footprints of Radharani. And when we take the darshan of lotus footprint of Radharani, on the left side on the mountain we see Lalita Devi's village that is called Unchagaon. This is all we show when we are going around. And then after that we get out, we leave Bhanugad, and we now come across the road, which is this one. We have come out now. We have come out towards Dangad. After completing our Bhanugad darshan, we have come out to Dangad. But on the way, when we are coming out on Dangad, to Dangad, we come across a beautiful place. Now, this place is very unique. When Vajranab installed the deities of Radha, Ladili Lal, in the course of time, in the by the divine will of the Lord, the deities disappeared. And just 400 years back, Narad Muni took birth as Narayan Bhatta Goswami in Uncha Gaon, in the village of Lalita Devi. And Narayan Bhatta Goswami got a dream. Radharani came in his dream. And she held him by his own hand and took him all the way to this place and told him that my deities, my, my, I am lying under this stone. Please take me out and install me in my own house. So it was this place, under this tree, Radharani's deities were revealed by Narayan Bhatta Goswami. So this place is mentioned over here. See, this is a place of tapasya also of Narayan Bhatta Goswami and also Radharani's deities were revealed again by Narayan Bhatta Goswami and that's why this place also is a worshipable place. Everybody bows down here, offer their flowers and pranams and does pradakshina and then they go ahead to Dangad. And we come here to a beautiful structure. After telling the story of this structure, we will end today and my daughter will come tomorrow to sing. Today she cannot come. So we have time till 15 minutes more. So Dangad is the second most important peak of Barsana. It has got two important structures there to be visited. One is Jaipur Mandir and another is actual Dan Bihari Mandir. You can see the gorgeousness from distance the expanse, the beauty, the architecture, the structure, the meticulousness. Now, few minutes we will take just to behold the beauty of this temple. Huh? I would like, before I tell the story to you, first behold the beauty of this temple. It's a, almost about two acres area, floor-wise, around 88,000 square feet. And it's a structure of ground plus two floors. Plus ground plus mezzanine plus plus floor. It's a very amazing structure. From distance you can see aerial view, how each and everything is meticulous. Now you see one angle of all the designs and stone carvings. There's one mezzanine floor. And this particular see which I'm showing you is Surya, Surya window. It's a very multiple, multicolored glass window is there. And every day the sun ray falls on this and multicolored rays fall on the temple floor from this. Very, very beautiful. It's a mezzanine floor. Ladies come and sit here to take darshan. And this is terrace, the second floor. And this is a staying arrangement here around that. Then you see a particular room has got such a meticulous design. This was made around 450 years back. Today, there is no maintenance by government. Without any maintenance, they are maintained so beautifully. It's like, it looks like an eternal structure. Of course, it's not eternal, but it is so beautifully made, the way it is made, the way it is also looking today. Then we come across some other structures. The, the surrounding, there are about 100 rooms there. Each room is like a royal palace, palatial room, you know. You see the designs made at the doorstep, at the upstairs, and sideways, on this side. 
each, each on each particular wall there is a painting drawn carved in the stone and painted in the paint the doors you can see inside there are huge rooms which are fully stony rooms small small windows are also so meticulously designed you can see this is around the temple this is not the temple the temple is this this is main temple around that what you see is this around that all around almost 100 rooms are there then you see small small thing the elephants the horses the horse riding people everything is so meticulously designed you see this tulsi vrindavan there are two of these in front of the temple very beautiful very huge is so beautifully carved so now we come to the story please listen to this story very carefully it's a very instructive story this is uh, savai madho singh when we go from um, mumbai to vrindavan we go by train that time we come across a station called savai madho singh savai madho singh pur something like that he was a very famous king very ardent devotee of radha rani so he thought at his time 500 bar bell bajaya maine 730 ko aapko lana tha na so this particular king when he was there around 450 years back he thought that radharani temple is very old become very dilapidated and he had lot of wealth and power so he thought there is some space on dangarh so i will make a beautiful temple for radharani and bring her deities from that temple to this temple so with that mood to keep the original radharani of bhanugarh to give her a better beautiful place he designed a meticulous big temple and in those days there was no cranes or many many big things like they had to bring the stones on the elephants the elephants had to climb the mountain with big big stone slabs then they were carved carved over there for years together they were carving you can imagine how the architects must have designed first of all then the architect architects design how they must have executed in the carvings how they must have put it it took so much time and energy and so much meticulous situations and after many years of hard labor of heart and brain and mind put into the service finally whatever i showed you manifested and then it was decided that on a particular day radha rani's deity from bhanugarh will be brought and installed in this temple suppose it is tomorrow and today is the evening and tomorrow morning the deities are going to be brought there today night this king gets a dream and radha rani comes in the dream and tells him my dear king i will not be able to come to your temple because bhanugarh is my original home i will not like to leave my home i am very sorry now adigadadar prabhu if you are the king what you would have thought please tell me unmute and tell me i would think that this is not actually a real dream it is just some hallucination and i would have gone ahead with my plans hare krishna okay number 1 number 2 if it was true dream and you are getting instruction what you would feel very dejected what would you say <laughs> i to to radharani shrimati radharani yes no 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 please radharani either you come or you expand yourself in another form and come in this temple that i have built for you i'll tell you what i would say i would say why didn't you tell me earlier <laughs> hare huh? krishna ha huh? you could have told you are coming on the dream today you could have come on the day one when i started planning before procuring material and elephants and everything i planned made i made my design that day only would have come in dream baba please don't waste your time i'm not going to come there so i wouldn't have done everything but please understand the king did not say any of these things 
neither he said what you said as number one yo oh, it may be a hallucination i will do what i want to do neither he said that he neither he said please come please come i'm so, uh, i request you please come he didn't say that he said whatever pleases you will be my pleasure because we have to understand he had not made this temple to please himself to to glorify himself or he to to make himself famous in the whole universe that see how great i am i made this temple for radharani radharani came to my temple see see my effort see my glory ha huh? he had not done any of these things he had done simply to please radharani and when he came to know her pleasure is in staying back in her own temple he immediately accepted please understand we have to learn how to serve because whenever we serve we have some some agenda behind or some fruit is in the mind something is there in what i will get what is it there in for me nobody will know maybe in the world's eyes we are very selfless people but in the heart of our hearts there is some some personal gain is expected at least i will get some blessing at least i will get some you know mercy or something something i will be receiving but the king has exhibited a uh, utmost mood of doing anything and everything just to please her after doing such a big temple with such a meticulous situation such a architecture such love such devotion such desire he invested instantly he said okay and he put another deities over there radha kushal bihari they are still there so acharyas say that uh, we should all visit this place because this was this was made in the mood for adarani only so we should not miss visiting this temple and some people say and interpret that uh, the king was proud so radharani knew he was very proud so she didn't want to come to this place but i personally don't feel like that because i feel that king had done great sacrifice king had exhibited himself and how one should serve ha huh? let us see now what do we offer prayers here we offer prayer my lord please let me serve you selflessly let my desire never prevail over pleasing you that means my desire should be your desire in bible it is said that thy will be done there should not be my will only thy will be should be there my will should become one with thy will my will should not override your will my will should be over only to please you in all situations of life in my happy conditions in my sorrowful conditions in my wealthy conditions in my poor conditions in my rich conditions in my healthy conditions in my unhealthy conditions in all conditions of life your desire and my desire should become one and yet let your pleasure be the only goal of my life this is what we should offer prayer at this temple so let's go back now with this story now you'll understand i have showed you all these pictures to understand the magnanimity ha huh? the expertise the artistic situation the money the time the energy what is spent to please radharani and the result radharani never came here but the king still maintained his devotion as he had <clears throat> as far as i said we offer prayers after seeing this temple meticulously whenever i go here i only feel overwhelmed at what devotion this king had what mood he had huh? we have to go there to adopt this mood huh? we are not hearing uh, going there to as a uh, student of architecture to do our thesis to do our research we are going to adopt this mood we are going to capture this mood we want to capture this bhav of barsana that's why we are visiting this place we are not visiting for as a tourist you know oh have some fun see something different and something nice i am looking with beautiful to eyes and wonder no we are going there to adopt the basic consciousness of barsana dham that is why we are traveling so 
So please offer our pranam to the king with great gratitude that he has produced such a such beautiful thing for thousands of years to come. We will be inspired by you, sir, by your mood. Thank you very much. <clears throat> then on the same head, on the same mountain head, there is one temple called Dangad. This is how the entry is. When you come out of the complex of the Jaipur temple, that is the Radha Kushal Bihari temple, we come here and we see this Dangad. Dangad, this, this arrangement is Jula arrangement. This is where the Jula is swung. Whenever you see this structure, this is meant for swinging pastimes. So this is Jula, and this is now lately renovated, beautifully renovated Jula structure. And this is where you see from top. This is a place for Jula also, and the place for Ras Lila also. And uh, um, the deity here is called Radha Dan Bihari. Radha Dan Bihari, and uh, when you see this structure here, when you are seeing from my direction, the photograph direction, on the left side, you see a small niche to get down. When Radharani and Krishna performed Raslila over here with the gopis, Dalita became thirsty. So there's a small well there Krishna has dug with his flute and he has created sweet water from this stone and he had given Lalita to drink. That is called Lalita Coop, the coop that Lalita had drunk water from. I will tell you the detailed story tomorrow, but the stories are very long. It will take half an hour at least. Anyways, we will not uh, leave without offering our prayers. <clears throat> this place in essence is the place of Dana Lila. That means Krishna comes and begs from Radharani here. He bows down again and again and begs Radharani to give love to him, to give seva to him, to accept him as, his, as her own. So we also beg for love and service here. We also pray that, oh my Lord, let me never feel ashamed to ask donation for Krishna's service and Radharani's service. We are also begging, right? Please donate for the eye hospital which is coming up. So we should never feel ashamed because we are not asking for ourselves, we are asking for Krishna's service. So whenever it comes to Krishna's service, we should not feel any shame or any embarrassment or any ego problem to beg. Our life is meant to actually become a beggar for Krishna. Actually speaking, uh, I didn't tell you in the beginning, but I must tell you now. Another fifth way, huh? you made one, two, three, four points. The fifth point is one has to enter Barsana actually as a beggar. I didn't tell you in the beginning, but it's too much to you know grasp. How can I become a beggar? I'm not a beggar. I'm a doctor. I'm a I'm an American citizen. I'm an educated person. I'm an engineer. I'm a double graduate. I'm a postgraduate. I'm super specialized. How can I become a beggar? I'm not a beggar. But in the land of Radharani, even Krishna becomes a beggar. Who is a Lakshmi Sahasra Shata Sambrama Sevya Manav Govindam Adi Purusham Tamaham Bajami. Millions of Lakshmi serve him. That personality, Vaikuntha Adipati, Golokeshwar, Pratpar, Bhagwan. How is he coming here? In spite of having everything, Bhokta Ram Yagya Tapasam Sarva Loka Maheshwaram. He has everything. He is supposed to be the enjoyer of everything. And how is he coming here? He is coming here as a beggar. And what are we in front of him? Nothing. So, we beg here that we want to become a beggar here. And third thing is, we also um, pray that let your sweet pastimes of Dana Leela manifest in my heart. Like, uh, like our Narutanda Shakur says, na, uh, Sada is Puruka Mora Mane. This beautiful pastime that you are performing, oh my Lord, in Vrindavan Dham, let them be always manifested in my heart. And then let me be, if possible, be an insignificant instrument in your Dan Lila. If possible, you engage me. Whenever you are performing Dan Lila, engage me in your service. So this is what prayer we are offering. So we, we would like to end our today's talk over here. And uh, there is a lot to see and a lot to hear tomorrow. 
so please come on time today we lost 10 minutes because we got late and people came little late so i would like to start on time and uh, please invite more people there are possibility of same in the same effort many more people can hear and tomorrow we are going to do part 2 of uh, barsana past times now if there are any questions i can take one or two if you have any questions hari krishna dear devotees uh, if you have questions please raise your hand or uh, i will give every, actually the ability to unmute everybody now you can unmute yourself and you can ask directly if you have any questions for uh, vishwaru prabhu please ask hari krishna राधे जय जय माधव दोईते गोकुल तारुणी मंडल मोहिते राधे जय जय माधव दोईते वृषभानुदधी नवशशिलेखे हरि निष्कुट वृंदा विपिनेशे राधे जय जय माधव दोईते गोकुल तरुणी मंडल मोहिते दामोदर रति वर्धन वेशे हरि निष्कुट वृंदा विपिनेशे विषभानुदाधी नव शशि लेखे ललित सखी गुण रमित विशाखे राधे जय जय माधव दोईते करुणा कुरु मई करुणा को रीते सनक सनातन वर्णित चरीते राधे जय जय माधव दोईते राधे जय जय माधव दोईते हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे इज एनी क्वेश्चन ओके सो वी विल एंड ओवर हियर वी विल शार्प एट नाइन पी एम एटलांटा एंड सिक्स थर्टी पी एम इंडिया थैंक यू वेरी मच थैंक यू Thank you Vishwaru Prabhu very wonderful 